Hey there, I am attorney Kelly Longton, founder of Kelly Longton Law, where we provide effective estate planning for our everyday families. So I want to talk to you today about when you actually think your estate plan is complete, but you might be missing some important points. So roughly two thirds of Americans do not even have an estate plan. So that's according to a recent survey on caring.com. And if you're among the minority of U.S. adults who have actually prepared a will or a trust or other end-of-life documents, you may think your estate plan is settled. But you might want to think about that again. An estate plan is a living set of documents that should be regularly reviewed and updated. Even if you're vigilant about changing your estate plan over time, there may be aspects that you've missed such as beneficiary designations for retirement accounts or life insurance policies. Now, because your estate plan relies on others, such as designated decision makers and beneficiaries, it is important to consider not only what might happen to you, but also what might happen to them. Now, there may be other aspects of your estate plan that you've overlooked as well. The best laid plans often go awry, but paying attention to even the smallest details can help you keep your final wishes intact. So the question I have for you is, do you have a backup decision maker? Now, a well thought out estate plan involves numerous individuals that you designate to carry out your preferences. So some of these people are personal representatives or executor. Depending on which state, they go by specific names, either personal rep or executor. And that's just the person that you appoint to administer your estate through that probate process after you pass away. Could be a trustee, and that's the person that you name to manage your trust money and property if you've set up a trust. There's also the guardian, and that's somebody to whom you give the legal responsibility to care for your children, including any adult children who actually do not have the capacity to care for themselves. You also have your power of attorney agent. So this is both financial and medical. And this is just the chosen person who will have the legal authority to handle medical or and financial affairs on your behalf if you become unable to manage your own affairs for, for yourself. Now, choosing these crucial decision makers is not a matter to be taken lightly. They will be exercising considerable control over you and your affairs and must be trusted to act on your behalf. However, there may come a time when they're no longer able or willing to do what you're asking them to do. And this is why it's important that you list your first choice as well as at least two backups for each of these positions in your estate planning documents. Now, people's lives and your perception of their lives, that can change dramatically in a short period of time. And certain changes might impact their ability to serve you. For example, you might find out that a trustee has had problems handling their own finances, which calls into question their ability to handle trust funds on your behalf or for your beneficiaries. Or a guardian could have issues with their children, which causes you to question their fitness as your child's caretaker. Now, it does not have to be suspect behavior that makes you question your decision. It can be something as, you know, as benign as age. Somebody who makes an ideal guardian in their 30s and 40s and 50s might be less ideal in their 60s and 70s. Similarly, a legal guardian might be too young at the moment, but the perfect candidate in five or 10 years from now. And what would happen if the guardian that you named dies or becomes disabled? A replacement may also be required if a named decision maker approaches you and declares that they would rather not take on that responsibility. So the key takeaway is that you should regularly reevaluate your choice of trusted decision makers and name backups in case you are no longer around to amend your will or trust or other estate planning documents. Alternatives will ensure that there's no catastrophic failure in that chain of command that leaves crucial end of life matters in the hands of the courts. So let's talk about something else that is near and dear to me and that's pets. So many pet owners will acknowledge that their furry and sometimes feathered and scaled friends are very much a part of their family. 
Your pets are arguably more reliant on you than your children for their daily needs. Have you stopped to ask who's going to take care of your beloved animal friends when you're not able to do so anymore? And it's probably not the case that your pets are overlooked. And indeed, if you're an empty nester, your pet might receive the devotion once reserved for your children. But they may not have been top of mind when you met with your estate planning attorney to create your unique estate plan. In addition to naming a legal guardian for your children, you can name one of your pets. As with any other trusted decision maker, it is helpful if you can provide a list of other people to care for your pet in case your first choice is unavailable. Instructions on how your loved ones can find a suitable home for your pet or shelters that you're comfortable having your pet surrendered to in the event that no one can care for your pet. So beyond naming a caretaker for the animals that survive you, it is best to put your wishes for their care in writing. That way the person who takes ownership of your pets knows exactly what needs to be done for them, including things like medications and allergies, their favorite toys, and how to best handle any unusual quirks that they may have. Another thing I wanna to talk to you about is whether or not you've named contingent beneficiaries. Now, a beneficiary is someone that you name in your estate plan to inherit your money and your property, such as your bank accounts and investment accounts and your insurance policies. And upon your passing and the administration of your estate, these accounts and property are distributed to or managed on behalf of your chosen beneficiaries. However, there's a few instances where you will need a contingent or a backup beneficiary. And that's if your primary beneficiary predeceases you, or if that primary beneficiary cannot be located, or if the primary beneficiary refuses to accept their inheritance. Without a contingent beneficiary, your money and property might be passed on according to the state law in any of those scenarios. And this could require going through the probate process, which can delay distribution, increase the estate settling costs, and lead to family infighting. Now, all of these potential outcomes are best avoided, and that can easily be done by naming a contingent beneficiary or two or three or more if you have any doubts. And another thing is, have you considered the unthinkable? And although you may prefer not to think about it, you should be prepared for the unthinkable events. All of the loved ones you name as beneficiaries in your estate plan predecease you. Now it's highly unlikely, but catastrophic scenario in which nobody in the legal chain of inheritance is alive to receive the proceeds in your estate having contingent beneficiaries may not be enough. So depending on where you live, if you have no surviving family, the government could end up with all of your money and property. And although this is not a common occurrence, for those with smaller families and few living relatives, it is not impossible. Adding a remote contingent beneficiary clause or a family disaster plan to your estate plan allows you to name a charity or other organization that will receive your money and property should the unthinkable happen. And you always want to plan for the unexpected. For many Americans, illness, accidents, or other unexpected life events serve as a wake-up call that they should have a basic will at the very least. Although incredibly important, many people still put off estate planning citing procrastination, a perceived lack of enough money and property, lack of knowledge about the process, and concerns about the cost. Now, estate planning doesn't have to be complicated or expensive, and when you consider the potential costs of not having an estate plan, can you really afford to leave things to chance or to the government? For those who already have documentation in place, your plans need backup plans to account for the unexpected. Now, it's worth your peace of mind to revisit an estate plan and add backup decision makers, pet caretakers, contingent beneficiaries, disaster clauses, and anything else that you think may have been overlooked. So our estate planning attorneys ensure that all of our bases are covered. So if you live in Massachusetts or New Hampshire, please feel free to contact our office for an appointment. 
Uh, I thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it beneficial. I'm attorney Kelly Longton from Kelly Longton Law. Please make sure you like and subscribe our channel so you can stay connected with us and hear about new videos that are coming out.